and welcome to Britain Unleashed Tiny Travel Tips installment number two. This time we're going to be talking about how to get into the UK and before you even leave, how to figure out what it is that you may need before you arrive in the United Kingdom. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to www.gov.uk. This is the main government portal for everything that you need to know about coming into the UK, staying in the UK, visiting, etc., etc. Anything you need to know, it's pretty much on this website. Uh, I'm going to go accept all cookies because it doesn't really matter. Okay, so welcome to gov.uk. This is your homepage. And since we're talking about visiting the United Kingdom, I'm going to go down here to visas and immigration. Right, now I can tell you from experience that if you're coming from the United States, I'm going to base everything here in this video on coming from the United States, but what I show you, you'll be able to um, go back and do this on your own to see what it is you need to do if you're not actually coming from the U.S. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check what you need to do. Pretty basic, so right here at the top, what you need to do. And we're going to check, even though I know that we don't need one, I want to show you how to do this just in case. If you're coming to the U.K., we're going to check if you need a U.K. visa right here at the top. Okay, start now, pretty self-explanatory. All right, and you've got a drop-down list here of all the um, countries, so what's your nationality, as shown on your passport or travel document. We're gonna assume you have a passport, and I'll scroll through all of these countries to get to, eventually, USA. It doesn't say United States, it says USA. Next step, if you're coming from somewhere else, you just look for the name of your country. All right, in this instance, we're going to assume that you're coming just to visit. So what are you coming to the UK to do? We're going to say tourism. And then next step. And obviously you have some other choices here if, you, if you're coming to work or whatever, but that's beyond the scope of what I want to talk about right now. So tourism, next step. And as I said, you won't need a visa to come to the UK. And you can stay for up to six months without a visa. Now that's six months... Uh, either in one big stretch or six months broken up into however many trips you want to take uh, in a 12-month period. And it's not a calendar year, it's a rolling 12-month period. So six months in any 12-month period, you can stay for up to six months or a, uh, a collection of trips to the UK for a total of no more than six months. Um, if you're coming for any other reason, obviously you're going to need to check the visa requirements. So now that we know we don't need a visa and we can stay for up to six months, let's go back to the home page. The easiest way for me is just to delete all that and go to gov.uk again and I'll start over visas immigration you can back up through it as much as you want but that's just easier for me to do okay so the next step we could do is go to visit the UK and here basically is just telling you uh, it's just asking you whether or not you need a UK visa what types of visa there are and more detailed um, information about visas if indeed that's what you're going to need but we know we don't need a visa so we're going to go straight to traveling to the UK since that's what we're doing and here we have at the UK border entering the UK now before you even leave obviously you need your passport and there are certain things you can and cannot bring depending on where you're coming from and that depends on if you're from the European Union or from outside the European Union or it may say EEA European Economic Area which includes the EU all the countries in the EU plus Norway, Iceland, and Liechtenstein, I believe. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, what can you bring with you? Depends on where you're traveling from. So bring your goods into the UK. If you're from a European country at the minute, remember all this is going to change with Brexit, but that's outside the scope of what I'm talking about today. So if you're coming from inside the European Union country, if you're coming from a EU country and you are from a EU, an EU country, then you can bring at the minute, whatever you want to, as much as you want to bring it. If you're from outside the EU, um, oh, by the way, uh, EU citizens, it says right here, rights and status of EU citizens currently living in the UK until 30 June 2021. If you're from outside the EU, which we're assuming that you are, you only have certain things uh, that you can bring in certain amounts. So uh, your duty-free allowance means you don't have to pay duty on them, you don't have to pay tax on them. For your own use without paying duty or tax, you have to bring them yourself or you bring them to give away. Um, and most of this has to do with alcohol and tobacco, uh, tobacco, I almost said Tabasco, tobacco. So alcohol allowance, tobacco allowance, allowance for other goods. Uh, you can bring in other goods worth up to 390 pounds um, as long as it's for your personal use. Okay, so now that you know what you can bring, we're going to go back to, sorry, I'm just backing up here. Um, 
go back to entering the UK again, and we're back one too far. And that's before you leave the UK. So now I'm going to go up here to border control. And at border control, your passport or your identity card, in this case coming from the United States, it's your passport, it's going to be checked. Make sure you have it out of the wallet or outside of its holder before you get up to the uh, border control area. You're going to assume you're coming in by plane. Here's information if you're coming by bus or coach. If you're from the, uh, the European economic area, as I said, that's the EU plus Iceland, Liechtenstein, and Norway, then you uh, have a separate way you can go through for now. Again, this may change after Brexit. Again, I'm not going to talk about that. If you're from a non-EEA country, which includes the United States, they have uh, recently since May of 2019, so if it's been a while since you've been there or if you haven't been there at all, since May of 2019, they've opened uh, e-gates. And one of the countries that you can use an e-gate for and not actually talk to a border control agent is the United States. So there are uh, seven countries here, including the U.S. You can either go see a border control agent, and there will be certain instances in which you might need to do that. They are detailed down here, um, right there. Or if you uh, don't meet any of these criteria, all of these, then you can just go up to the e-gates and go through, or you can go through a border agent. Either way, they are not stamping passports anymore. So if you were looking forward to getting a nice Heathrow stamp or a Gatwick stamp, um, they're not stamping passports even if you do see a border control agent. Uh, one exception to this is obviously if you are going to uh, have a visa for a specific reason and then they will stamp your passport because otherwise you can't use your visa to do what you're planning on doing. But as a visitor, uh, they will not stamp your passport anymore. Now, the e-gates. That being said, with this coronavirus going on, uh, I am filming this on March 12, 2020, and it's just now exploding. So the e-gates are open as of last check. I'm reading this, as you can see, live off the internet right now. If this coronavirus gets any worse, it is possible, it's not guaranteed, but it is possible that they will close the e-gates and make every traveler arriving, no matter where you're from, uh, check in with a border control agent so they can verify where you've been and how long you've been in, say, a country that maybe uh, has a more severe case of coronavirus. So for now, you need your passport. You don't coming from the United States. Passport. You don't need a visa. You can use the e-gates. Again, this may change, and they won't. Unfortunately, will not be stamping your passport. But that's it. So uh, when you do go uh, talk to a border control agent, if you do need to want uh, need to go see one, there are some things you need to know. Obviously, you need to know uh, why you're coming you're on holiday or vacation, whichever you want to say, how long you're going to be staying. Remember, it's anywhere up to six months. They may ask you where you're staying. So have your address of your hotel or your B&B or your friend's house. They may not ask you that, but they may. So have the address ready to go just in case. And if I'm assuming you're flying into London, if you're planning on traveling outside of London, they may ask you where you're going. I often will go um, up to the northeast, up to the north and uh, stay in my caravan. So like this last trip, I was up in my caravan in Yorkshire. Did I caravan? No, I didn't say my caravan. I was up in Yorkshire. Uh, so I just said I was going to Yorkshire and they may ask why. Just go to visit some friends. So know uh, how long you're going to be there, why you're there, and where you're staying. And again, they won't stamp your passport. So those are your tiny travel tips and I hope you found them helpful. Thanks. Bye.